Hello gang and welcome to Cooking with Chris. Oh yes, I'm going to show you today a world first. This is a world first, not just a British first, a world first. You know in the papers recently the latest, shall we say, fad. The latest fad is talking about gender issues. Gender issues. Have you decided to be a boy or a girl or something in between? That is the latest fad. Well, today, for the first time in world cooking, I'm going to show you a gender neutral meal. Yes, boys and girls, this meal can be had at breakfast, lunch or dinner without offending anyone. How fantastic is that? No one's going to come up to you and say, I'm offended that you're having that for lunch when it's really for breakfast. This is a gender neutral breakfast for you today. I'm going to show you how to cook this, boys and girls. First of all, let me tell you, I am, uh, I, I am a member of Slimming World. I'm not a, uh, a consultant or a teacher or anything like that. I'm a fully paid up member with two stickers so far. Look, look, look. Half a stone award and one stone award membership card and everything. I am a member of Slimmer's World, but I am not a consultant or anything like that. Not yet, anyway, not yet. Though. I did think about it, actually. One stone certificate, okay? Here's the ingredients we're gonna use today. We got some corn peppered steaks, that's vegetarian. We got some eggs, we got some onions, and we got some baked beans. Very, very simple ingredients, and that's what we're gonna use. Now, at Slimmer's World, it's not like that Dare I say it, Weight Watchers. We don't worry about calories, dear. We talk about sins. That's what we talk about, sins. Ladies are allowed 15 sins a day, and gentlemen, I believe, are allowed 20 to 25 sins a day, okay? But today's meal contains no sins whatsoever. You can eat as much as this to your heart's content, and it's nice and easy. This gender-neutral meal, boys and girls. So here we go. Let's get on with it. First of all, we've got the onions. We're going to, here's, here's something very bad. Oil. Do not use cooking oil. Very, very bad. Get out of my house. Over the way there. This is your Slimming World best friend. Fry light. Oh yes. Only a tiny little amount of sin. In fact, there's no sins in this. No sins. I nearly mentioned the word calories, but we don't use calories. We use sins. So get your, um, am I a minute now? There we are. Get your things sprayed up with the spray light. This is so easy to do this. Look, one, two, three, four, five. That'll do us. That'll do us. Now, I've just noticed on my, uh, on my onions um, that they're about to run out of date. So I'm going to use all of these. That's quite a lot for one person, but... Sin free and onions, I believe, are also a speed food which speeds up your weight loss. So just plonk those, plonk those in your frying pan like that. Let me move the camera down a little bit so you can see better. There you go, you can see what I'm doing now. So just put the onions in there like that. Quite a lot of onions. Oh, gold, hang on a minute. <coughs> there you are. Quite a lot of onions in there, isn't there? Okay. Very hot pan, put it right up and get those cooking. Now, I like my onions done quite well. And out of the whole meal, this is the thing that's going to take the longest to cook, the onions, okay? So we do those. They're in now. Prepare your baked beans. Oh, yes. Now, I was brought up... Um, oh, where's the tin opener? I thought I had that here. Oh, there it is. I was brought up on a lot of baked beans. I'm looking a bit crooked, aren't I? That's a minute. Am I crooked? There we are, that's better. All the onions are in here now. Now this is the longest thing that it takes to cook the onions. So you can get those going. As I say, I've got the pan at full heat now. And, um, oh, the smell. I know it's cheating using this. You could sit there, cut up onions, but you don't want to be crying, do you? to your husbands or your wives or something like that. Huh? You don't want to be crying, just open a packet and be done with it. Available from all good branches of Waitrose. Oh yes. So the onions are on. Time to prepare the baked beans. I like Branston baked beans. 
They're a little bit, they end up a little bit thicker than the Heinz ones. I was always a Heinz person. I was actually brought up um, on a lot of baked beans when I was a, a little boy and uh, through my teenage years and I kind of stopped eating them. I rediscovered, to be honest, baked beans when I, jo when I rejoined Slimmer's World because, again, one minute, where's my spoon? A tin of baked beans is no sins. Pile them in. Thank you very much. I should put those on a low heat while the onions are doing. What else have we got there? Oh, I've forgotten to put these on. Corn steaks. Corn steaks, again, sin free. They are very nice. Very peppery, if you like these. I should have put these on first. I've forgotten there. Oh, gold. I'll have to turn everything else down now for a minute, won't I? So put those under the grill, or you can put them in the in the uh, the frying pan with the spray light, with the uh, was it fry light spray light? I can't remember what it's called now. Fry light, something like that. Put those under there. They're going to take about six minutes per side. That they are okay, but that's okay because the onions are going to take a long time anyway. So just get cooking that. I mean, how easy is this? And, you know, people go down to McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken and Subway and you spend six quid. I mean, I don't know how much this has cost me. They were like £2.50, those. The eggs, well, I'm only going to have two of them. You know, this hasn't cost six quid, has it? It just amuses me how people live their lives at McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken when you can come and do this. This whole thing should take you about 15 minutes. All right, we've got the eggs standing by here. Well, five minutes of time has passed now, boys and girls, and uh, the onions are nice and brown. Uh, and I think I'm gonna put my eggs on there. What are those corn steaks doing? I should have put the corn steaks in first, remember that. And they do taste nice. They are a really good substitute for meat. I'm a vegetarian. Um, I've become vegetarian about four years ago. Didn't like the way animals were treated and all that business, so uh, that's why. And uh, I eat a lot of corn stuff, and it's very nice. You get the cubes, and you, it, they all taste lovely. I mean, the, the corn peppered steaks is what I'm using uh, on the show today. Okay, so uh, finally, let's do the eggs. Eggs, eggs. Of course they're free-range, dear. Stop question. Of course they're free-range. We can't have little chickens cooped up, can we? In those nasty little cages. Ghastly people who do that. Ghastly people. No. So once again, your favourite friend, Fry Light, just free sprays of that. Remember, we don't count calories. That's why those naughty people at Weight Watchers. What is a calorie anyway, darling? You hear the word calorie and you want to hide. Sins are not so bad, are they? Be honest, sins are not so bad. Okay, so we'll have a couple of eggs. Let's see if I can do it today without um, uh, breaking the yolk, shall we? I can't usually, but there we are. Very gently, one, no, it's broken. Oh, for God's sake, every single time. How'd you do it, girls? How do you break eggs without the damn things breaking? Mind you, it, uh, minus six, oh, the other, oh, uh, no, and now a bit, of sh and the other one's broken as well. Oh, and there's a bit of shell in there. Oh, don't you hate that? Where, I can't find it now. I think it's hidden under the oak. Hello? <laughs> I think it might be on my finger. Oh, dear. Right, hang on a minute, I've got my wire is all over the place here as well. Now I've got egg juice on my hand, I do hate that. I don't like egg juice. Okay, so the eggs are quite high. Actually, although I, um, I do try and not break the eggs, I turn them over anyway. I like them to be doubly cooked. Who was that woman, um, government person, Edwina Curry, do you remember her? Oh, she was doing it with John Major, weren't she? You know, uh, uh, uh. She was doing it with John Major. It was in all the papers and everything. All that time she was going on about her eggs. No wonder she was going on about eggs all the time. Doing it with John Major. Shocking. Shocking. Anyway, so the eggs are in there. The onions are coming along. Uh, I'm going to turn the beans up a little bit now. Now, I like my beans congealed. I know some of you are going oh, bleh, 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 like that. Either. No, I like them congealed, so they're a bit stiff. That's why I use the Branson one. They are a little bit bigger than a uh, little bit um, uh, uh, thicker 
than the than the uh, than the Heinz ones. So they're on as well. And now another five minutes in time will pass. Well, another five minutes has passed, boys and girls, and uh, I think we're ready. To be honest, the beans are nicely congealed. I might just turn those eggs over. The onions, well, they're done. I can turn the beans and the onions off now. They're done. Now, that's what I mean by well done onions. Look at those. Oh, oh, the smell of those. I love it. I'll turn the egg over just for a couple of minutes. As you can see, they did break. Oh, oh well, never mind. Just make sure it's cooked. I'll probably be better off doing omelettes than those. And the corn steaks are done because I can smell those in here. All you need now is a nice big plate. Remember, this is sin-free. Sin-free, this. Oh, gosh. Turn it all off. Onions first. Mmm. I think I burnt the pan a little bit. Never mind, that'll come off in the wash. That's done. Put a bit of water on that. I've got a, a, a ceramic frying pan. I find that uh, doesn't burn, or at least cleans easy. I still burn the blooming stuff on it, don't I? Uh, corn steaks out, please. Where are they? There we go. Look at those. Oh, smell lovely. Peppered corn steaks. Um, there's usually an offer somewhere on peppered corn steaks. Waitrose, three pounds. Sainsbury's, two pounds, 70. Often you can get three for the price of two of those somewhere, so keep an eye out for those, okay? Uh, we'll put the beans on top of the corn steaks. Right. Slimmer's World Gender Neutral Meal. That's what this is. Unofficial, of course, unofficial. Remember that, gang? I'm not a Slimmer's World staff, just a, just a lowly old member trying to collect as many stickers as possible. There's the beans. And there's the egg. Which is a, a little bit big to go on there. Sorry, I'll just put it on top and fold it over. There we are. Now, it's done. We are ready to eat. Can I just show you this? Are you on some sort of diet? Not on Slimming World, are you on um, some other sort of diet? Like a, a cabbage diet? I mean, have you smelt people on cabbage diets? Oh! <laughs> As they walk past. No carbs diet? Or are you on a Weight Watchers diet? Do you sit there eating a carrot or salads? Oh, Slimmer's World meals look so much better, don't they? There you are. Go and make one yourself. So the total time to do this is, it's taken me 15 minutes, but that's because I didn't put the corn steaks under early enough. Probably you knock that up in 10 minutes flat. What, you rather go to McDonald's? I don't believe you. Hope you enjoyed my little cooking show. Cheerio. You want one of those, don't you? You want one of... <laughs> I know you want one of those breakfasts now. Yes. Hope you enjoyed that, boys and girls. Uh, just a little video uh, I did last night. Morning to you. It's uh, Friday the 1st of September 2017, back in the studio now. Phone lines are open as well if you want to call in at any point. Otero 81443477 is our local London number. Otero 81443477. I love the, the smell of onions. I just love it. You know when you're going past those um, burger vans or a little man doing hot dogs and all that sort of thing in the street... Um, and that smell, it's, it's not that it's not the sausages, it's those onions that are delicious. I could just have a fried onion roll, couldn't you really? Let's hello to some of the early people this morning. Lovely Diane is there, as always. Good morning, Diane. Thank you, those of you that have been sharing the show on your wall already this morning. Thank you, gang. Gustav says, morning, dear. <clears throat> After yesterday's show, I'm amazed they have allowed you back on the air when you were accused of anti-Semitism for not having a Star of David on the wall. Uh, and you said, and what would I have a Buddha? Although he's quite fat, so there's no room. Well, it's true. Where would I put a Buddha? What do you want me to do? Move the picture of the Queen? Oh, my God. She won't be happy about that just a moment. There's a flower in the way. There's a leaf. In, it looks like she, she's got a beard with that. 
<laughs> Let me move that slightly over there. Is that better? There we are. The queen must be fully exposed. She was um, fully exposed. You know what I mean. There we are. Uh, there were some uh, not too flattering pictures of her. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, God. Hang on. I don't know how I'm going to do this now. I wish I hadn't started this now. Hang on. Let's put that there. How's that? Is that all right? And put that there. Perhaps turn it around a little bit. There, well, that'll work, won't it? There we are, that's better. I did see some quite not so flattering pictures of the Queen yesterday in one of those uh, dreadful papers. I can't remember, it might have been a Daily Mail actually. And um, she looked rather grumpy sitting there driving her Land Rover somewhere. Did anyone see that? Oh, poor Queen. Can we please have just flattering pictures of her? Like myself, you know, you only see flattering pictures of me, don't you? Yes. Uh, he says, Gustav says, fat shaming Buddha. How offensive is that to larger people and Buddhists? I'm offended. Good. I'm glad you're offended, Gustav. You let me know anything else I can say to fully offend you, and I'll be very happy with that. All right. Morning to Gary Butler. Nephew Gary. I should be seeing you in a few days' time. Uh, Craig says, is that a rude word there, Craig? On my wall... Dear me, we don't have swearing on my wall, dear. Go and have a look at my wall, Craig. Do you notice any incidents of swearing from me at all on my wall? No. Please, dear. A bit of decorum in the house. This is not Capital Radio or Kiss FM, dear. God's sake, man, what's wrong with you? Uh, good morning to Rod. Uh, Anna and Rod are getting married soon. Wow. I was married once. Yeah, 1983. Nine months it lasted. Got to try everything once, haven't you? Thank you, well, Rod. Good luck with that, my friend. And Ashley says, you know when Chris's food is ready, the smoke alarm goes off. The smoke alarm never went off. How'd you work that out? That smoke alarm never went off, did it? I didn't hear a smoke alarm going off. Perhaps a little alarm go off. Beep, 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 something like that. Oh, my God, my sister's on. My sister's calling in. What does she want this morning? Good morning, sis. We've got Evie here as well. Morning, Sharon. Good morning, Evie. How are you, Evie? Great niece Evie is watching the show this morning in Lincolnshire. Hello, Evie. All right. What are you doing? We went to Skegness yesterday. And did you have an ice cream? Yeah. I like ice creams. Do you know what ice creams are like, Evie? When they dip it in the chocolate. That's what I like. And there's like a crispy outer coating <laughs> on the ice cream. I saw you go on the donkeys in the photographs. Hello. Did you go She's very fast? Eh? She's gone silly. She's just sitting there grinning. Oh, that's because she needs cuddles. Tell her I'm going to force her to hold my hand when I'm up there. So he's going to hold your hand when he's up here. She's laughing. Nothing. What about picking you up from school? I'm looking I'm forward, yes. Can we go? Uh, I've already asked Tracy. You're not Tra allowed to do that. <laughs> I've already asked Tracy if we can do that with George. I want to go and pick her up from school. Perhaps with you. Oh, you'll see Evie there and Harry, wouldn't you? Oh, no, that he finishes early, didn't he? Are they all in the same school? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, OK. Why, what did why you are they not... the Dalek yesterday? Pardon? The Dalek. I did see the Dalek, which you incorrectly spelt, sis. D-A-R-L-E-K is incorrect. Uh, oh, uh, D A. I was there having an ice cream. And I looked over the road, and there's a Dalek going along with an ice cream in its hand. The Dalek had an ice cream in its hand. Yeah, if you look at the picture, you see an ice cream. <laughs> That's in Skegness. There were three of them, weren't there? I saw three of them. No, pictures. no, it was just one, and he was squirting people, going exterminate. Oh, I Very hope he good. weren't squirt, squirting my great nieces and great nephews. I will well, be upset. George was not happy because he said he was going to exterminate him. George. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> was the Dalek... Everybody stood there shaking. <laughs> was the Dalek annoying George? Yes. <laughs> so where are you all going today? It must be their last day of holiday, is it? Circus today. Oh, OK. Now, what do they have at circuses now, sis? Because there's not animals anymore, is there? No. Well, they've got a transformer car there or something. What's that? You know, the car that stands up that goes into a robot thing. What, a real one? I don't know. I'll let you know later. I'll try and take yeah, a picture. Yeah, please do. Take some videos down there. I think there's there. horses there, because when we've drove past, I've seen horses outside. But not clowns. I hate clowns, Shell. They're frightening. Yeah, there will be clowns there. Of course, oh, we've been in the because just... of Olivia. So don't come near me, because I won't be happy. They're just evil clowns, don't you think? They're horrible. They're scary. Whoever invented those? 
Ugh. Horrible, horrible things. But there's no, like, lions or tigers or anything like that anymore, like when we were children. I mean, it is cruel, isn't it, really? You can't... Are you getting lots of love hearts and that going across your screen? Uh, I don't know, because I... Well, uh... I... Just a minute. Hang on. Stay there a second. I can do something to... Uh, I, I, I don't know. Kind of watch my own... Just a minute. Oh, can you know? Because Evie's just pressing the button. Oh, no, she's going for the angry one. She's just pressing the button. Did so, Hang on a minute. I can't... Right, do that, do that. No, it's difficult to... I don't kind of watch my own show while I'm oh. doing my own show, if you see what I mean. Oh, I see. Um... Oh, yes, I can. Yeah. Yes, there they yeah, are. Yeah, that's just pressing a sad faces. Here they all go. <laughs> There's love art, sad faces. Oh, can we have some happy faces, please? He wants happy faces. Do happy faces. faces. Who's, who's doing, doing that? that? Who's that doing, who's doing that? Who's doing that? Huh? Yeah, she's doing it now. <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, she's got... <laughs> uh, oh, those faces. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what they mean, all those love arts and things. It's just oh, a, and now there's an angry it, Someone's doing angry oh, ones. Who's doing oh, the angry someone ones? Someone's show now. Well, somebody having their head shaved. Someone's doing angry ones as well. <laughs> oh, anyway, sis, I've half packed my bag. Good. And I'll be seeing That's you in a few days' time, all right? I must tell you. Yes. I've just had a bold egg from my egg machine from Jimmy. Oh, yeah, tell everyone what Jimmy got. Jim, my, uh, my nephew Jimmy got you for your birthday. <laughs> It's the three-in-one egg cooker. It's fantastic. Egg cooker. Can you get yeah. big, big ostrich eggs? Can you get those in there? I bet you could get one in, but I don't know what you'd put in for the measurements. But I had lovely runny yolks this morning for uh, my boiled eggs. Oh, I can't do those. Sure, the egg always breaks. I don't know if you just saw the cooking video. My, my eggs, I'm very, I don't know if it's the way I do them or not, but um, I always manage to break the yolk as it goes in. Which, I mean, don't make much difference anyway, because I turn the damn things over anyway. I'm always oh. worried oh, about Oh, no, them. these are I've boiled eggs this morning. Lovely. Uh, I'm always worried about them not being cooked properly. But people drink them raw, though, don't they? Oh, God. have you ever done that? No. Well, go and do it now. Go and do it now. We're going to do that, and we're going to film that. We're going to film you doing that. I, no, we're going to film you doing it. No, I'm, I'm not going to do it. No, I just I'm told you I wouldn't it. do something like no. that. Yeah, you must do that. No. Yes. I am not your puppet. Yes. I am not doing it. You, you don't are really my anymore, puppet. Brother. I'm da 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 puppet on a string. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. All right, then. Cheerio, sis. Bye. Bye. How lovely to hear my beautiful sister taking a break from eating those boxes of chocolates and drinking those glasses of wine and coming and spending the time to talk to her good old brother here. She's only a couple of years younger than me. That's that's my sister Sharon there. Um, uh, let's see. Gustav says, a new picture of Donald Trump. Where? It's not Donald Trump. It's Barry Manilow, the September picture. Because it's the 1st of September today, the first day of the meteorological autumn. Notice how I had to slow down for that word. Meteorological. And I know that because the weather bod last night on BBC News told us it was the first day. Of, it was the last. <coughs> <coughs> Yesterday, he told us it was the last day of the meteorological summer. We are now in autumn. Autumn. And not... The Fall. It's not called The Fall, it's Autumn. As Nate, N-A-T-E, put on his wall this morning, oh, looking forward to The Fall. Please, Autumn. It's bad enough all these American words coming in here and trying to take over. It's Autumn. Autumn. Why is there an N on the end of Autumn? Why is that? Who put the N on the end of autumn. Nah. Autumn. Nah. Autumn. Nah. You can't say it, can you? Autumn. You can't say autumn with an N on it, can you? You can't, you can't do it. Go on, try it. Try it. Try it. I dare you. Try it. Autumn. Autumn. Nah. It's autumn. Autumn. There's no N. N is silent. I could do English programmes. In fact, this programme is shared on people who want to learn English's walls. Did you know that? Yes. There's something you didn't know. Good morning to young Scotty Ogilvy, who is in New Zealand. He's moved in with his beautiful girlfriend. How did you manage to get someone like that, Scott? 
God's sake, man, you must have something very special to get a young lady like that. She's beautiful. Good evening from a rainy Christchurch in New Zealand. Greetings. Greetings, Scotty. Christopher Woodhouse is there. My God, you're up early, aren't you, Chris? Chris Woodhouse has just taken to uh, cycling once again and his legs have been aching. You're probably used to it by now. He's been doing it for a couple of weeks. But the first day he went out on his bike, three hours on the first time. <laughs> You're supposed to build up to these things, dear. Not just suddenly go out and cycle across London like that. Blimey. Good morning to Tim Thomas. Morning, Tim. Who says, well done for showing how easy it is to eat ordinary food and diet and not be hungry. I do ordinary food, Tim. I've never been really keen on stuff when they start mucking around with it. I mean, for example, a salad I want as a salad. No dressing. Don't like the dressing. Never did. They muck about with it, don't they? And pieces of this, all these different sauces they do. Although I have started doing... Is that the kids doing these smiley faces there? Look. <laughs> it's got to be, isn't it? Um, I have started using spices quite a lot, which reminds me, I must get some rosemary. I've run out of rosemary. Do, do you like rosemary, Tim? You sprinkle it on top of your chips, don't you? Oh, in the oven. Oh, the smell of that is just so delicious. It really is. Uh, Gustav says, is Sharon ringing from the babe station offices? Yes, my sister. No, she's not. She's been sacked again. A lot of you don't know, uh, my sister used to do a show on uh, Babe Station. And unfortunately, she got sacked from there because no one rang her. You know, And they put her on later and later. So when the drunk blokes come in from work, they thought they might ring her. Nothing. Nothing, unfortunately. So it's a great show. She is the only person ever to have been sacked from Babe Station, my sister. Very, very sad. Very sad. Uh, morning to Alan Russell. Good morning, Alan. Nice to see you Wednesday, Alan. I'm sorry you couldn't find a team... Um, a quiz team to join in. Maybe next time you want to come with your son and uh, you could double up and um, uh, 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 win the prize. A £30 bar tab. Yes, who won it this week? Oh, it was the short blanks, weren't it? Mind you, they, they were back with a bang this week, weren't they? They were all there this week. The short blanks. <laughs> after, after the complaint about me being homophobic. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, dear me. God's sake, man. Mm. Tim says coddled eggs. Kerry has them at least three times a week. I don't know what they are. Coddled eggs. Is that a new thing? Don't know what they are. Anyway, that's that. Uh, let's have a look over here. First day of autumn, as I say, boys and girls, there's our new Barry Manilow picture for the month. That's quite a nice one, isn't it? It looks like he's about to... Um, looks like he's, he's kind of halfway through even now or, or stays, something like that. Because proper singers, unlike karaoke people like myself, OK, they they sing and tell a story with their faces. I don't think I do that. I probably just sing. I know that you're going to find this difficult to believe, but it's unlikely I will be ever on top of the pops. Banana, -na -na, da -da, no, although it's only on at Christmas time, isn't it? Now that we're talking about bringing that back at some point. Quite like to see uh, Top of the Pops back again. You remember Thursday night, 7.30? 7.30 or 7 o'clock, I think it was, before uh, before EastEnders was even on air. Top of the Pops with the great Tony Blackburn, Dave Lee Travis, and, of course, the perv of all pervs, Mr Jimmy Savile. Dear me. Um... So uh, this morning, after I, I, I uh, uh, yesterday morning rather, popped up to the swimming pool, I was very, very disappointed to see my picture is still not on the wall yet because I am member of the month at the Livingwell Hilton Hotel swimming pool. I am member of the month. And my oh, hang on a minute. No, it was August yesterday, wasn't it? Ah, that, that'd be why. That's why, you see. It's not time yet. So today, hopefully, I will go up there and my picture will be on the wall. Chris Reardon, member of the month. Probably people will be waiting outside for me to sign bits of paper, as they often do, you know, outside supermarkets and that. Oh, you can always feel someone brush past you. And you can see them, you know, kind of looking at the corner of their eye to see if it's really me or not from the television. It's true. It's true. So I'll be going up to the swimming later. Um, I think the children might, some, uh, the children aren't back off holiday yet, are they? Because um, I was in there for 10 minutes and there were no children in there at all. Then after 10 minutes, I was the only one in there for about half an hour. Well, until I finished swimming. 
that I came out, you know, into the changing room. Some bloke had taken up all four chairs with his stuff. There's a couple of benches in the men's changing room. And some people, honestly, they don't want to take up their little bit on the corner. They want to take the whole thing up. So I kind of, can I just move those to the side, please? And you move them. Just do it, dear. Just do it and be done with it. Came back here. Did a little bit of gardening, went to bed, got up. I did uh, I did the cooking video, as you saw. Um, I did that in the afternoon, yesterday afternoon. That was about uh, one o'clock I recorded that. And then um, last night, went to bed, got up again. Uh, around about half past seven last night, I did my arabetta sauce. Spaghetti arabetta I had. Blew me head off once again. Far too much chilli, which we like very much. And then I sat down and um, I, I, I watched a bit of the film, which was on on the television recently, and I've been wanting to see this for ages, The Theory of Everything, which is the story so far of uh, Professor Dr. Stephen Hawkins. And it's an excellent film. It, it will have you in tears. Um, uh, Professor Stephen Hawkins, just a, a brilliant, brilliant scientist, and he's got that uh, motor neuron disease, which is just... Just very, very debil debilitating. It's just awful, and it's you know, it's 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 gradual, and it gets worse and worse, and and there's a cure for it. And it was interesting to see. I didn't know he'd got married and had children as well. Sort of early on, it shows you his girlfriend, and when he finds out he has the disease, he tries to push his girlfriend away. You know, no, I don't want you, kind of thing. But of course, he does. He does want her. It's it's um, uh, some people are very unselfish, aren't they? They're very, un is that the word, unselfish, de-selfish, unselfish. My mother was one of those people. Very, very unselfish people. And thinking about other people and not themselves all the time. And he was pushing her away because he knew what a hard time she would have trying to look after him. My, my, my mother was exactly the same, you know. She never complained or anything or or wanted anything, or asked for anything. I wish I could be just a tiny bit as, as as unselfish as my mother. I consider myself quite a selfish person, believe it or not. Yeah, funny, isn't it? I mean, I don't I don't really like too many people around me. Um, most of the time, I must say, I'm quite quite on my own, really. We were having this conversation the other day, weren't we? That uh, a, a lot of people, they need someone in their life. They need to be with someone. You know, when they got home, when they get home from work or whatever, they need someone in the house. I, I don't need that. I, I find myself I don't need that. But similarly, I actually don't like anyone coming into, into my home sometimes. Uh, friends, of course, you know, close friends for a couple of hours, maybe. And then that's it. <laughs> you know, I, I think we I kind of surrounded myself years ago by this bubble. Um, after being hurt by various different relationships, left, right and centre. And I, I closed myself off after that. It's very difficult to open yourself up again after that. Funny, really, isn't it? But it's, it's wonderful. How, how fantastic to be unselfish like that. And I'm sure you know people who are unselfish. Perhaps you, what do you class yourself as? Selfish? A little bit selfish? Very selfish? Well, you know, just when you're thinking about you all the time. You, you, you. Then there are the people who, who are unselfish and look after other people. And the other people take the mick. There's a lot of that going on all the time. I see that an awful lot as well. So um, great to be unselfish, as indeed this 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 girl who who wanted to marry Stephen Hawkins. Anyway, they got married uh, and they had children, which I didn't know that part of the story. All I really know about Stephen Hawkins, he is a brilliant, brilliant scientist. Isn't he? Um, and it goes on and he, he starts getting ill as a young man. And I've got so far as the bit where he goes in to see the three... I think he sits, he goes into a big room full of books. I think there's four, I don't know, what do you call them? Teachers, professors, doctors, you know, very, very clever people. Not like me. Ah, I'd walk in there. And I must say, he's writing on the blackboard all these different equations and things like that. And they mean absolutely nothing to me. They don't mean absolutely nothing to me. There's all this writing. And he goes into this room full of books and they, they look through his papers and they say, well, uh, uh, paper number one, uh, that's not very good at all. Paper number two, no, a lot of holes in there. Paper number three, you haven't answered that. 
Paper number four, absolutely brilliant. And is and is he's already ill and he, he's walking with oh, I mean it makes you cry. There's a tears in my eyes watching it while he was walking along. Um and uh, he comes out of there and he breaks into a little smile on his face. And um, it, it's a lovely film. I'm about, I don't know, only about a quarter of the way through that. So I'm hoping to watch the rest of that this afternoon when I have my lunch. I've got spaghetti arabetta again because, you know, I do two or three lots at a time. It's easier then. So a great film to watch. Um, I don't I don't think the films are on the replay thing, are they? You know, the um, iPlayer and all that. Films... Films don't go on that, do they? The films, do you know? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure how that works. All right, but try and see that film. Theory of Everything, the story of Stephen Hawking. As I say, I've got some more to watch. Uh, they told him when he was a young man, he only had two years to live. And he's still here today, isn't he? In that wheelchair and, you know, he's got the, 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 the voice thing attached to his neck or mouth or something. What a clever man. What a wonderful man. He really is. So I'd watched that. Then I came up here. I've watched a little bit of that. Came up here and I've recorded now my music and chat show. I've recorded the first music and chat show, which will be played out hopefully on Upload Radio. Now, Upload Radio, I used to do my talk show on there, but I did it for about six weeks and I found it a bit restrictive, to be honest. I, I wasn't comfortable doing it. Um... So I thought I'd try a music and chat show, which I've done before. And I've done it last night and I've sent it up to them. It's an hour long. Uh, they have to check it first for anything that they're not happy with. So it goes through. I think it probably goes through software. I can't believe anyone sits there and listens to it. And uh, if, if it's OK, it should be played out on Monday morning at 10 o'clock. I've tried to get that slot. And if if it works then I'll do one every Monday at 10 o'clock, OK? That's not live, that'll be recorded. So the music and chat show, and it's music from all time, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, music from today. There's a bit of classical in there. And of course, you're truly chatting away in between the records. You will have heard most of the stories already on this show. I just warn you that. But they're very much truncated because, you, you know, you, you've got to find room for music as well. Which I find very difficult to do, actually. OK, so that's what I did last night. Uh, started packing my bag, as you heard, for my little visit to my sister. Going up to my sister's on uh, Monday morning, actually. Uh, my mate would be moving in here to look after the house while I do that. And uh, giving it a good clean. I usually get him to get, do it. I, I pay him, don't worry. I do pay him. And that's it, OK? Uh, just let you know, and I miss this. The new series of that wonderful, wonderful, fantastic comedy series on Channel 5, Can't Pay, Well Take It Away, is back. It's back, and I've missed the first one. I'll probably get it on 5 over, o, Overdosed, or whatever it's called. 5 OD, 5 Overdrawn. <laughs> OK, so Channel 5, Can't Pay, Well Take It Away, the brand new series has started. My favourite character, uh, my favourite person on there is Paul Bowhill, followed by his mate. I can't remember what his mate's name was now, but they're, they're very, very reasonable. All right. Um, Tim says, on the subject of autumn, the N is silent as the T in Harlow. Harlot. Is the T silent? What's Harlot? I don't know what Harlot is. Uh, and Tim loves rosemary on roast potatoes. I like put rosemary on, on Miss Limmer's World chips which I'll do a little video of those at some point, okay? Mm. Um, let's have a look. Um, ah, this is how you do it. You break the eggs into a china pot and then put the lid on. Place this in boiling water and hey presto, coddled eggs. Oh. So are they soft in the middle? I'm going to try those. Are they soft in the middle? I can't stand snotty eggs. Oh, no. When I haven't been cooked properly. How disgusting are they? Not nice. Gustav said, would never have thought you'd have difficulty opening yourself up. I always have difficulty opening myself up to you, boys and girls. It's true. Now, get worried, because tonight, boys and girls, NASA has confirmed, by the way, there's a phone line out if you want to call in, 0208 NASA has confirmed that a large asteroid known as Florence... Where do they come up with these names? I mean... Florence, 
for a large bit of rock. Wouldn't you be calling it Butch or uh, Bruno? Something like that. Florence for a large rock. Who come up with that? Anyway, the large asteroid known as Florence will fly past the Earth today at about 1 p.m. British summer time on September 1st. It's coming. Oh, my God. Better take your umbrella out in case bits drop off. We're going to be walking through down to Waitrose later with bits of metal and fire pouring out of the sky onto us. You see, if King Jing Jong Ping Pong doesn't get us, this asteroid is going to come down. It's all very worrying. It's roughly 18 times the distance to the moon and is close enough to categorise Florence as a near-Earth asteroid. Be prepared, as we say in the Cubs. Cubs, do your best. We will do our best. It is one of the largest rocks the space agency has ever detected. That's a, I like that word, detected. Largest one has ever detected since it began monitoring passing asteroids. They reckon it's 2.7 miles in size. That's a big old rock, isn't it, eh? While many known asteroids have passed by closer to Earth than Florence will on September uh, today, all those were estimated to be smaller. Florence is the largest is in this morning's Daily Mirror. Florence is the largest asteroid to pass by our planet this close since the NASA program to detect and track near-Earth asteroids began. So that's very, very well. It could all be over today, gang. It absolutely could all be over today. So as I say, go out and be very, very careful, OK? Be very, very careful. Tim's corrected me. Arabiata. Arabiata. Is that how you say it? Arabiata? What did I say? Arabata. Arabiata. I might actually have that correct from now on, Tim, because of you. I've never been able to say that. Arabiata. Rocks all over the place. Now, if you've got a car, have you got a VW? Oh, yes. You remember that about a year ago, wasn't it? They got in trouble. Mucking around with air exhausts. I'd be horrified if people started mucking around with my, my with my exhausts. Although I did have a little bit of a trouble with that, you know, about a year ago, as you well know. Any pre-2010 diesel car, this is in this morning's sun, Volks, Volkswagen, Volks, not wagon, dear, V, V, Volkswagen will cut, are you ready for this, £10,000 off the price of an all-electric e-Golf as it launches a diesel scrappage scheme today. I should bloody well think you should do as well. You naughty old German Volkswagen people, dear. Confusing us all with your terrible exhausts. <laughs> Mind you, they got away with it, didn't they, for a while. Good luck to them, that's what I say. If you can get away with something, then do it. That's what I reckon. Other discounts uh, uh, include a £4,000 off a regular petrol or diesel Golf, £2,800 off a new Polo and 4000 off a Tiguan. What's a Tiguan? Is that a big car? Is that a 4x4 four or SUV? I don't know what a Tiguan is. Any pre-2010 diesel vehicle that has been owned by a customer for at least six months can be traded in for the new Euro 6 model until December the 31st. So how much is a new e-Golf? How much is an e-Golf? Let's have a look. So you're going to get 10,000. So it's from, from 31,000 pounds. The, oh. Oh, I'm impressed by this. Now, according to Compact Car, is it Compact Car? Now, get this. The range of the all-electric Golf, they're saying is 299 kilometres, battery only. So what's that? Is What's that? In, I don't know what that is in miles. Hang on. KM to miles. Let's have a look what that is. Okay, kilometres to miles. So what did I say? 299, 299. Just 185 miles. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, is it? You see, it's getting there. Uh, I think that the best reasonably priced car at the moment 
uh, can only do something like 110, 120 miles on a full charge. And you would assume that, if they, you know, under factory conditions, um, that then that it can do that. In the middle of winter, right, when you're always driving at night, you've got your lights full on, you've got your heater on and your radio. I very much doubt it would do 120 miles under those conditions. But according to this, um, Volkswagen e-Golf, £31,000, so it's, I suppose that's a mid-range car now, about 31000 You get £10,000 off that if you're trading in an old diesel, which makes it £21,000. And you're getting 185 miles to a charge. So let's take a bit off that for winter. Let's say 140 mile on a charge. That's not bad at all, is it? Do you think? I mean, I would love an electric car. Toyota just don't seem to be um, uh, doing much with electric cars. They they got hybrids. I've got a hybrid. I've got a RAV4 hybrid. And uh, driving carefully, I can get 61, 62, 63 miles to the gallon on that. And it's a big, heavy car, what I've got. That I've got. Sorry, that I've got. But I don't, I, I've wanted an electric car now for, for about 15 years, but uh, it's the range anxiety that get me. But with the Golf, well, it's a different thing, although it's a much smaller car than what I've got. I did go in um, and uh, uh, whenever I go in for a service, I was in for a service a couple of weeks, weeks ago, a 20,000 mile service. And uh, the salesman always comes up. He's a very fit man. I think I told you this, didn't I? And I said, I've got my eye on a um, a Toyota, um, oh, what's that big thing now? The um, Land Cruiser next time. I said, but I'm a bit worried it won't go in my garage. He said, why is that? I said, well, even mine now, I've got to retract the mirrors as I go in and out of the garage. Now, he said, well, if, you, if you're doing that on that car, he said, the, 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 the Land Cruiser, he said, I promise you that won't go in your garage. And he said, inside, it's like a spaceship. Well, that was the wrong thing to say to me. I want one now. Anything that looks like a spaceship, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, TCC Barwis says, give a shout out to my business name, digitalcloudmining.net. What does that do then? Is it, it better not be a rude site, is it? Seamine tries to make mining as simple. And what, what's that mining? I don't know what that is. What is mining? DC mining. I don't know what that is. is. Is that like digging up rocks? Is that what you mean, digging up rocks? I don't know what DC mining is, to be honest. All right. OK, boys and girls, uh, I'll do today's birthdays and then we'll disappear from you this morning. OK, because it's time to go and I need to get up to the swimming pool. Uh, quite a few birthdays today. It's funny. We had a couple of, birth couple of days where we had only one or two birthdays this morning. Eleven. So here we go. Happy birthday today to Adam Blue Buckley. Happy birthday, Adam. Are you coming down to Central Station tonight to celebrate your birthday? That is the question because you usually come down there uh, every now and again to uh, to sing a couple of tunes for us. Adam can, Adam can actually sing, you know, unlike myself. Happy birthday, Adam. Happy birthday to Alessandro Fontana, who is 25 years old today. Happy birthday to you. To Mun Bill. 27 years old today. Uh, what's that? That looks like, like a business. It says Bull's Head. Bull's Head. That's got to be a business, isn't it? Bull's Head. And it says 40 years old today. But I'll give you a shout out anyway, OK? Happy birthday, Bull's Head. Happy birthday to John Hildeny, who's 48 years old today. To Tamas Nuz, Nuzpul. Nuzpul, have I got that right? I hope so. Tamas Nuzpul, 38 years old today. Ronan Barton who, um, I don't think he works there anymore, but he used to work for British Airways. Only a young lad. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Ronan. Uh, Dean. Hello, Dean Stifler Spires. Spears? Spears? Happy birthday, Dean. 31 years old today. Don't see you anymore since I left the two brewers, do I? Don't see you anymore. I hope you're doing all right, sir. Sam Thorne today is 36 years old today. Peter Travis, happy birthday to you. Uh, Stephen Westlake. Now, it says 30, Stephen. Come on, dear. You're not 30, are you, lovey? 
you must be honest with your age. Otherwise, the insurance people won't pay out, my love. Happy birthday, Stephen. And happy birthday today to Tina Hall, who is 49 years old today. Time to sing the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, lovely people. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthdays on this rather nice Friday. For the first day in autumn, it's, it's not going to be bad, is it? Perhaps we get another Indian summer. That's it for the show today. Thank you very much for joining me. Tonight, I'll be hosting karaoke. It's Friday night, so karaoke tonight at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, Kings Cross. Show starts at 8.30 and goes through until midnight. Uh, come and meet some friends. You don't have to sing if you don't want to. Just come and join in the nice atmosphere, right? So karaoke tonight and every Friday at Central Station Bar, Wharfdale Road, King's Cross, starting at 8.30 and finishing at midnight. Have a nice Friday and I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.